أن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليم كثيرا بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة وجاهد في الله سبحانه وتعالى ربنا حق جهاده يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يسلح لكم ما لكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله عز وجل وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار عاذن الله تعالى من نار جهنم من أذابها in the jurisprudence of al-Islam, the fiqh of al-Islam, the science of al-fiqh, there is an issue that is known as fiqh al-awwaliyat, the fiqh of understanding and comprehending the issues that are priorities. The better an individual understands this particular aspect of the jurisprudence of al-Islam, the more appropriate and the more beneficial his decisions, her decisions are going to be made. Fiqh al-awwaliyat, having comprehension, understanding, and knowing how to pay attention to what is the priority as opposed to engaging one's self in an issue that although it may be important, is not as important as the priority that takes precedence and it has preference that a person gives their attention to it. This is not something that is exclusive to the deen of Allah, but the Quran and the Sunnah have come to emphasize it. Let the Muslim know. This is not something that you should allow yourself to be negligent concerning it. The fiqh, the understanding, the comprehension of priorities. As you all can see here in this masjid right here, on the side, there's construction that's going on. The ongoing, continued development of this masjid. 10, 15 years from now, inshallah, as this community remains upon the sunnah, practicing the correct form and understanding of al-Islam, this place has to continue to grow. Decisions have to be made as to what are we going to prioritize. So, the, the doors, the doors as well as the hamamat that are being taken care of. The administration of this masjid, they had to look at that issue and they had to prioritize. Do we give our money and do we spend the money of the community on this particular issue or is there something that's more important? One of us as an individual, you have to make a decision. When making decisions, you have multiple choices that are in front of you. You have to prioritize. Don't compromise your happiness. Don't compromise your safety and your security. There are issues that are priceless. The fifth of the oh, what he at? Person wants to go, he wants to purchase a pair of glasses. And glasses and purchasing them today, it's not like purchasing them 10, 15 years ago. You have so many options and so many issues you can choose from. Maybe the glass is going to cost the individual 300 pounds. 350 pounds if he has to pay from his own money. When he looks at prioritizing the issue, he says, there's nothing that is equal to my health, being able to see my health. So although it may be 350 pounds, I'm forced, I'm forced to spend this money as opposed to, as opposed to spending on something that may not be as important as the other thing. Everything in our life is like that. Marriage, divorce, getting a loan to go to the university, everyone has to be able to understand the fiqh of priorities. What do you put first? 
It's an extremely important issue. As I mentioned, the one who has the ability to do it, his decisions are more efficient. They're more beneficial. They're going to bring to him, inshallah, as we bring to her those things that will make your life much more easier. The fiqh of the awriyat. There's an individual who wants to give him dawah in Allah. So in giving dawah in Allah, do I talk to him about the importance of the miswak? I say to you by the Lord of the Kaaba, the miswak, the stick that you use to clean your teeth. That miswak can get you into the Jannah. That miswak can be an issue that will get you into the Jannah, bi'idhnillah, in the month of Ramadan, outside of the month of Ramadan. A person dies, and when the muhasaba comes, where Allah is going to hold him accountable and look into his affairs, what he did, what he didn't do, he stuck with that miswak. That miswak and the thawab, the ajur, the virtues, the fadail, the benefit of it, it'll be put in a person's mawazin, and it may get him into Jannah. But in giving dawah to a non-Muslim, do I focus upon the virtues and the benefit of the miswak first, or do I call him to the tawheed of Allah Azza wa Jal? No doubt. Any person who has his intellect, any person who read the Quran and the Sunnah, he knows that the Jannah and the Nar, they were created because of the tawheed of Allah. The books that Allah sent down were sent down because of the tawheed of Allah. The prophets and the messengers came because of the tawheed of Allah. Salawatullahi wassalamu alayhi. But our very creation is because of the tawheed of Allah. So why in the world would an individual engage this person who he's given dawah to about the fiqh of the miswak, which as I said is important, can get you into the jannah. You educated an individual about the benefits of the miswak. On the other hand, you educated this person you're giving dawah to concerning the tawheed of Allah. What do you talk about? Have an understanding and comprehension of the fiqh of an awwaliyat will determine that you're going to engage him in the dawah of Allah, a dawah to tawheed. I don't think in our audience is any individual who doubts that or he's sitting there and he said, what is this guy talking about? The miswak is surely the thing I should be talking about. If we looked at the Quran and we looked at the Sunnah of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with contemplation and consideration, everyone is on the same page that our Nabi, our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a man who was Hakim. He was a man who was Aqil, Aqil, extremely wise. So when looking at him and how he dealt with issues, made decisions, how he established Islamic State, it becomes quite clear that the Prophet knew what he was doing, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. And one of the things that he paid attention to, which is from the fiqh of the awliyat, the priorities that he gave in his da'wah of Allah, leaves no room for doubt. It's not acceptable for the Muslims to neglect it. If there is a negligence in regards to this issue, there are going to be problems. And that is the attention he paid to the masjid and the role of the masjid. You cannot and you will not be a real Muslim if the masjid doesn't play a part and a role in your life. Everybody here right now, and we all know our level of Islam, our level of commitment and what we put forward. We made efforts to come to this masjid because on Friday, this ibadah is an ibadah that's been legislated in a particular place and you have to get to that place. It plays a role in the life of the Muslim. If there is a Muslim man that does not have a connection to the masjid or a Muslim woman, then we have to say there's something going on, there's a problem in their Islam. So there may be an individual who's hearing my words, he will hear my words, Muslim man, he's hanging out, he's partying, he's doing whatever he's doing, he hears these words, I say to him, I say to you, your first time coming to a masjid, new Muslim, or you're a Muslim all your life, but you just started coming to Juma. If the masjid is not playing a role in your life, your Islam, there's a problem. You run the risk of standing before Allah and your efforts are thrown in your face because 
You can't be a real Muslim. You can't be a real Muslim without any connection to the Masjid of Allah Azza wa Jal. It's a part of Al Iman. Allah wa Taala mentioned in the Quran, "Inna ma yamuru masajid Allahi min amana billahi wal yom al akhir wa aqam al salat wa at al zakat." Asa ulaika an wala yaksha ila Allah. Asa an yakunu ulaika min al muhdadin. Verily, the maintenance and the taking care of the masjid, it is for those people who believe in Allah on the last day. They establish the salat, they give the zakat, and they're not afraid of anybody except Allah. It is hoped, it may be, that these people are the ones who are guided because they have a connection with the masjid. Anyone who has iman and he believes in Allah on the last day, no masjid is inside of the equation of his everyday life, there's a problem. There is a problem. When we look at this issue, as we mentioned so many times from this member, the ulama, the ulama, the scholars of Islam, know your religion, know what you're doing. And because we're not from the ulama, we have to put ourselves behind the scholars of Islam, wherever they happen to be from. That's what the Quran commands. That's what the Prophet brought, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. So what they paid attention to is important, past and present. So those scholars of Islam, they didn't waste their time. They gave advice to this community by gathering proofs, importance, showing the community, know this, know that, know this. So from the proof that the masjid is from the priorities in Islam, is that all of those scholars of the past they wrote books specifically about the masjid, and they are a lot. Compare the books that are written just about the masjid and about the miswak. There are books about miswak, but they pale in comparison to the books about the importance of the masjid, what it is, and what's done there. That's a sign, an indication that the scholars paid attention to it, and we're behind the scholars, so the masjid is important. Those books of hadith, no book of hadith is absent in the book of hadith, the Qutb al-Sitta, the six books, except there is a chapter detailing what the masjid is, what you do, what you don't do in it. How do you come to it? How do you leave it? How do you sit in it? And the ibadat that have to be done in that place. That's for the Muslims who are trying to hold on to and trying to practice the Islam that the Prophet brought, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As for the new Islam, be a Muslim without a masjid. Maybe you can do the Juma at your house with your wife and your children. At your house with a few people who are there. That's not what the Prophet brought, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. So this word masjid in the Arabic language, it is what the scholars call the ismul makan, the place of making the sajda. Rasulullah mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aqrabu ma yakunul abdu ila rabbihi wa huwa sajid. The closest that the slave can be to his Lord is while he is in prostration, a sajda. The masjid is the place of the sajda. It's the place where you do that. Doesn't mean you can't do it in other places, but it is the main place that people are going to come together in a community way, and they're going to do that ibadah. As a result of that, many ayat come that have mentioned the masjid, many ayat, and many ahadith claim in order to tell the creation the virtues of the masjid, the thawab and the ajur that only can be found in this place only. You can't find it when you go out there. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna Ahab al Biladi ilallah masajiduha. The most beloved places on the face of the earth to Allah is the masjid. It's the most beloved place. Why? Because inside of it, people are going to cut their dunya off and they're going to think about why they were created. They're going to think about their ilah. That dunya, it has been put there, it's been created as a trial and tribulation. And the criminals are in charge of the dunya. And everything that they expose the minds of the general public to is forget about your Lord. Forget about your hereafter. Become consumed in your own personal life and your desires and so forth and so on. There are special virtues only in this place. You are not a real Muslim if you don't take the time out 
to learn about this place, to be in this place, to connect yourself to this place. Some people are better than others. They come every day, and there is some prayer that they're making in the masjid. Some, they don't come at all, at all. Through the duration of his life, he doesn't know the masjid. And that's why when one of the relatives of this individual, when he passes on and he dies, that person comes to the masjid now, and he doesn't know what in the world is he doing. He has no knowledge of what should be done, what should not be done. And this is something that we see all the time when there's a time of the janazah, especially for our women. We don't know what in the world that we're doing inside of the masjid, ya Muslim, as these people are trying to take away nominal, normal, al-Islam. This masjid is important. Know what you're doing. Come into the Juma today. Is this just to come to the Juma and that's it? No, we come to the Juma to understand what is our religion to do better, to be better, to do better, to practice this deen. So one of the things I want to bring to your match and to your attention is the importance of the masjid. The Nabi mentioned sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Saba'atun yudhidhubu allahu fi dhillihi, yawma la dhillu illa dhillu. Seven people will be protected under the shade of Allah yawma al-qiyama, on the day where there will be no shade, there will be no shade. And one of those people that he mentioned uh, is the man whose heart is connected to the masjid. It means something to him. There's that man who sits there and say, what the hell is this guy called talking about the masjid? People in Palestine and so forth and so on. And it just goes over his head and he doesn't realize. Right in front of your nose, right in front of your nose is an issue. If you don't make it something that's important to you, there's a question mark over your Islam. When we talk about the fiqh of the awwaliyat, the Prophet sallallahu gave da'wah for 13 years in Mecca. And he's hakim and aqil, aqil, 13 years to a tawheed. But that masjid in Mecca, it wasn't easily accessible to him. You can't be a real Muslim people of Mecca if we don't have a connection to the masjid. We're in the best place on the face of the earth, but... The masjid is not an integral part of, it's not a part of our lives. So he had to make hijra. He could have stayed in Mecca until al-Islam was spreading, until al-Islam overcame and overwhelmed the opposition. But it wasn't like that. It wasn't the case. So he went to al-Medina. When he arrived in al-Medina, when he woke up the next day after sleeping, the very first thing that he did was... He went to a tribe of Al-Medina. And they lived in the center of Medina at that time. And he told those people, and what he said to them, Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala alihi wa sallam, sell to me this land that you have right now. Sell to me this land. I'm going to purchase this land. They say, Ya Rasulullah, you don't have to purchase. We'll give it to you for free. Since it's for the message, we'll give it to you for free. So the very first thing that he engaged himself in was building the masjid. He could have taken the time out to make a legina, a committee for the orphans, a committee for the widows. He could have established his shura, his shura of the shiuch. Let me get a consultative body. Let me respect the leaders of al-Medina. Many things he could have did. He didn't do all of that. Because all of those things are going to come and they're going to be benefit, benefited as a result of their being a masjid. But just as important as that is what the companions reply when they say, Ya Rasulullah, you don't have to give us any money for the masjid. We're going to give it to you. That's what the companions were upon. It shows on the side of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the masjid is important. First thing he engaged himself in in the community. First thing. From the other side, the companion said, we won't sell you the land. We're going to give it to you for free. So the Muslim, wherever he happens to be, he's going to take care of the masjid. That's what that shows. That's the Salafi and that's the way of those companions. He's going to make his wealth, his resources at the disposal of the masjid to the best of his ability. So the scholars of Islam spoke about the issue, wrote about the issue, and we see that the Prophet وسلم, clearly, in a practical way, showed us the masjid, the masjid. If you want to be on Islam, the religion of Islam, it needs a masjid. And those companions, they accepted the challenge. And they gave him the masjid. 
because it was centrally located. They gave them that land. Which brings me to this issue that I have to bring to your attention, especially the younger people from amongst us. If someone were to ask one of you, do you know when the first masjid was built here in this country? The answer to that is 1889. You do the math, that's over 127 years ago. The first purpose-built masjid was built in London. It's called Masjid Shah Jihan. And the name itself shows you that there were Asian people who were connected to that. Now, I'm sure there must have been other musallas around the country, here in the UK. But that was the first purpose-built masjid. And they had opposition. They had difficulty in building that masjid. But it was done. So what's the point I want to bring to your attention? First point I want to bring to your attention is we have to acknowledge and we have to recognize what the first Muslims did here in this country. Our elders, none of which are still here. It was over 127 years ago. And after that masjid was erected, masjids started popping up across the UK. No doubt they had opposition because it changed the landscape of this country where they have churches that ring the bells on Sunday and that's all they have to do. They don't have anything real going on inside of their masjid because inside of their churches because it's just pomp and glitter for the most part. When these messages started going up, it became something that people had a problem with in their cities and their villages. So our elders over 127 years ago, the first generation Muslims came here and they knew Got to build a masjid because that's the sunnah. The prophet left Mecca, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He went to another place, another environment. First thing he did was build a Muslim. You can't protect your Islam, can't protect your community, can't protect your family without that masjid. Masjid has to be there. Allah Taala mentioned in making a decision or making a difference between his companions. La yastawi minkum men they are not equal, the companions. Those companions who fought and they spent before the migration or the conquest of Mecca, they are not like the ones who believe they fought, they spent after the conquest of Mecca. The ones who did it first, they have a higher degree. And both groups, Allah is giving them khayr. Both groups. That ayah can be used to say that our elders, that first generation of Muslims who built those masjids, this masjid and other than it, is not like the people who came after them. So those elders, many of them, they built masjids that were cultural. Masjids that were not teaching the truth. Messages that didn't experience the renaissance of knowledge that the young people are seeing today. I came to this country. I had nothing to do with this masjid that is here right now, that we're praying in. You came to this country. You came to this city. You had nothing to do with this masjid. We have inherited it. So when we're trying to change what the condition is in these masjid, where our elders don't have a clue what they're doing, these cultural masjids that are handicapping the religion and the Muslim community, we have to always remember these people had enough sense to put their money where their mouths were and they built these masjids. So Abu Usama, whatever masjid I find myself in, I have to respect those elders. As we sit here, we have to remember the efforts of those elders. We stand on their shoulders. So we ask Allah Ta'ala to forgive all of them and to put all of them into the Jannah because if it was left to us to come right now the way we don't spin and the way we don't give and the way we don't take care of the masjid if we had to do that right now maybe there would be no masjid because the way the people are right now the people are stingy right now we just want to enjoy the work of the people that went before us so now that we have inherited these masjids we now have to face the challenge we have to face the challenges that the Muslim community in the UK right now are dealing with. So our elders, may Allah give them the afu for their shortcomings. But now the real question is, what do we do? 
in the Masajid, in the Masajid, in this country. We don't want a masjid that is cultural, for sure. Because it is very easy for us to sit and debate what kind of paint should we use? And how many coats of paint should we use? What kind of clock should we put there? And, and, and what kind of air conditioning should we put? What are the lamps and the lights that we should put there? How, the, the, the system here with the microphone, what, that stuff is important, but it's not more important than the souls, the minds, and the hearts of the people inside of the masjid. The prophet had a simple, easy masjid. He would pray, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the salat of al-fajr, and he would pray in mud, and he would sit up, and on his face after the salat was mud and dirt. The way the people are today, the people say, I'm not going to the masjid because there's mud and dirt. I'm not going to the masjid because it's not warm. I'm not going to the masjid because of a million of reasons. My job, my this, my that. Those companions used to see the attendance in the masjid as part of the legacy of the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his legacy. So paying attention to the minds and the hearts of the people inside of the masjid is more important than the bricks, the mortar, the doors, the dirt, the hamamat, and this and that. The Prophet told the people, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was collected by the Imam al-Tirmidhi. On the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with both of them. لَزَوَالُ الدُّنْيَا أَهْوَنُوا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ مِنْ قَتْلِ رَجُلٍ مُسْلِمْ For the whole dunya to disappear, to be destroyed. The whole dunya and what's inside of the dunya, what's on the dunya. It is easier for Allah for that to happen than for one Muslim to lose his life unjustly. On the Hajj of al wida the Hajj of the Farewell Pilgrimage. The Prophet told the community back then and he told us, your blood, your wealth, your lives, it is more important to Allah than the city of Mecca and what's inside of the city of Mecca. Like the Kaaba. Your honor is more important to Allah than the day of or the month of Dhul Hijjah, one of the sacred months. Your blood, your lives, your property, you people, you individuals, you are more important to Allah than the most important day of Al Hajj. So, dealing with the minds, the hearts of the people inside of the masjid, their blood, their monies, their future, it's more important than the bricks of the place more important than that so with that being the case Hwani, we want to bring to the attention of this community every khutbah is not necessarily designed to blow the kufis off of your head one of the main reasons of the khutbah is to remind you hey you're not taking care of your job as it relates to you being a muslim where are you as it relates to the masjid you're working okay no problem but where's your money and your, where's your resources? The Prophet said to those people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Thaminuni ala ha'itikum hadha. Hey, you people from Beni Salama, give me a price, name your price. I'm going to spend for this land. I got to make a masjid for this community. I have to make a masjid for you and your children and the future of this religion. Those people's response wasn't, how much? How much do you, what range? You make a bid. They said, Ya Rasulullah, we'll give it to you for free. Hey, Muslim, Abdullah, the men from our community, we can stand up and we can scream and we can shout slogans all we want. The Khilafah, the Khilafah, the Khilafah. The Prophet Wasallam's his Khilafah and the Khilafah of the companions that came after him, the focal point for the community was that masjid. So that goes to show that a lot of the kalam is just slogans, empty slogans. I get up here, I tell you, the way of the companions. Kitab, sunnah, the way of the companions. That's salafia, salafia. But I'm not a man who goes to the masjid. Masjid doesn't know me and I don't know it. It's just empty slogans. You don't come to the masjid. You don't know the masjid. And when you come to the masjid, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know where to sit. How to sit, what to say, what not to say, what to do, what not to do. It became an integral part of the Islam of every Muslim. And as a result of that, it's our job, it's our responsibility as Muslims to do whatever we can do 
especially at this time, this time where we should be concerned, El Islam is being chiseled away. Our Prophet told us so many ahadith, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, like the hadith, El Islam is going to fade away. People won't know the five pillars of Islam. They won't know la ilaha illallah. They won't know salat. They won't know zakat, sawm, and hajj. They won't know. It's going to fade away. And from the fading away of this religion is the regular, normal, Amr, Bakr, Zaid from the Ummah. Fatima, Aisha, Sharifa. They don't know. We don't know. What is this place all about? What is this place all about? So with that being the case, Khwani, we have started a series where we started talking about some of the ahkam, some of the rules, some of the regulations of the masjid. But today's khutbah is about everybody here realizing if you're not connected to the masjid, you're part of the problem. You're part of the problem in terms of one of the biggest challenges that are on the table right now. The new Islam that the enemies of Islam want is the Islam where there is no masjid. Or the masjid that is there is an institution, is a mabna, is just a place where nothing is being said and nothing is being done. Everybody has to be connected to the masjid. I am not in no way here telling you you have to live in the masjid and you have to spend all your time in the masjid and I'm definitely not encouraging our youngsters to disengage from the dunya and just stay in the masjid. But what I'm saying, this is the focal point of the community of the Muslims that the Prophet showed us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From this place, the community was educated during his time. From this place, if you got sick, one of the companions was injured in the war. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, brought him to the masjid. From this place, the women came to the masjid and they learned their religion. From this place, people gave their debts and people... People took loans and they paid their loans back. From this place, when the Prophet wasallam wanted to go and make jihad, he gathered the people in, the mis in, the, in, the, in his masjid. When he traveled, when he traveled, he didn't go straight to his wife. He didn't go straight to his children. He would first come to the masjid. And when the community heard the Nabi is in the masjid, they came to the masjid. He would give them and depart with them some knowledge, go inside of his house. So it goes to show. The masjid is the focal point of the community of the, mis the Muslims. If the Muslims are not making it a place of importance, then there's something wrong. If the Muslims are not taking care of it, something is wrong. They have to extend it to accommodate the people. They have to do different things to bring ease to the people as it relates to worshiping Allah Azza wa Jalla. That's the message today, Abdullah. Not to blow your kufi off. Not to blow your socks off. Something simple and easy. Connect yourselves to the masjid. You want to get in as it relates to pushing back and repelling. The people who are trying to destroy our religion, connect yourself to the house of the houses of Allah, Azzawajal, wherever they happen to be. Alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi amma ba'du. As I mentioned during the khutbah last week, I think it was, we began a series about telling people about some of the ahkam of the masjid. Trying to inform the community of these issues so that, first of all, you yourselves can get the reward of knowing what to do, what not to do. We will continue that program, inshallah, Azzawajal, tonight, and everybody is invited to attend. You can't attend, learn about the masjid, what to do and what not to do. And from what we need to be doing is what that tribe, Bani Salama, did, and that is to put our resources forward to take care of the masjid. Bring to the table what you can do, even if it's constructive criticism. But don't be of the people who criticize just for the sake of, critic of criticizing. Don't be of those people. Don't be like those people. So we're asking you, inshallah, whether well, it's this masjid other than this masjid, especially the masjids that are switched on and they're trying to move forward into the future and deal with these challenges that are facing us, give and donate generously to this masjid and make your niyyah. My niyyah is, I've bought into the message of 
these people are trying to do the right thing, wherever you happen to be, and give from your monies. We ask Allah to forgive and to have rahma upon the Muslims of yesterday who understood this point, and that Allah Ta'ala doesn't allow us to allow this responsibility to slip between our fingers now that the ball is in our court. We ask Allah to help us to establish Al-Islam in its right way in this country, not to be of the people too rough on one side, too tough on, the, on one side, and too apologetic. Before I forget, I came into possession today of a text message about three brothers that I was shocked that I saw them, I knew them a little bit, that used to attend this masjid, have been arrested and charged with, with terrorism. Because there was a plant from the government, from the MI5. There was a plant, some non-Muslim pretending to be a Muslim. And when he sat with those three men, those three kids, those kids were telling him, according to what they were found guilty upon for saying things against this religion and saying things that now they're in prison. I want to say to the youngsters of our community, we are not afraid of any plants. We're not afraid of munafiqeen, people from MI5 in our community. We hope you come to Islam. I challenge you, come to me. Talk to me about the issue. I'll let you know what Islam is saying. And I won't bite my tongue. But we want to say about our youngsters, hey guys, what are you doing? The masjid is not for that, for you to come here and then go to prison as a result of that. Because you're spewing nonsense, destroying your lives. Our community, we need to wake up in this masjid. There are youngsters here, you don't know them. Make it your job and your responsibility to sit with them, to plug into them, to see what in the world these people are talking about. Perchance all that kid needed to do was to talk to some normal person. He doesn't know a lot about Islam, but he knows basics of Islam. Perchance, maybe, that that individual is going to listen to you, and then you help to save him and his future, be idnillah. You young people need to relax and stop throwing your lives away that based upon empty slogans, based upon things that are in your imagination. Aqim as-salat yarhamakumullah. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استوى اعتدلوا وتراسوا ولا تختلفوا فتختلف قلوبكم وسد الخلل إن تصويت الصف من إقام الصلاة لتصون صفوفكم أو يخالفن الله بين قلوبكم لينوا بين أيدي إخوانكم straight out the lines إخواني everybody look down the line make sure that the line is straight and even put your heels in your feet Connect it to the person on either side of you. Sisters, take care of the lines. Be gentle, be easy. Verily, the straightening of the line is from the complete and perfect salat. Man wasala safan wasalahullahu man kata'a safan kata'ullah. Do not perceive me in the movements of the prayer. Stowa tadiru. Allahu Akbar. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi. تبارك اسمك وتعالى جدك ولا اله غيرك الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين 
والعصر إلا الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر الله أكبر سمي الله من حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم الصراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضال آمين قل هو الله أحد الله سمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمي الله من حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر التيات السلام عليكم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Just a few announcements. Firstly, please donate generously on your way out. This much relies on the will of Allah and your financial support so that we can keep providing the activities for the community. Today's evening lecture will be delivered by Sheikh Abu Usama and will be on the fiqh and etiquette of the masjid. The Saturday lecture after Isha is entitled Life in the Grave and all, will also be delivered by Sheikh Abu Sama. This Sunday we have a very important seminar titled Dealing with Trials and Tribulations According to the Quran and Sunnah. The seminar will be from 4.30 p.m. till 7.30 p.m. inshallah and will be delivered by Sheikh Dr. Abdul Majid. 
We encourage you all to attend and benefit as we are currently witnessing trials and tribulations on a daily basis. The regular Urdu lectures will take place on Saturday after Isha. Our food bank service urgently requires food donations. Please leave your donations during office hours at the Masjid reception via door C. We're now entering the final phases of the refurbishment to the lobby and the wudu areas. We anticipate for the work to be fully completed within the coming weeks, inshallah. We are very grateful for your patience throughout this time and we hope that you will enjoy and appreciate the results of the hard work that has been put into this project. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward everyone who has contributed and we hope that you will continue supporting us in improving the site for your convenience. We received requests for du'as for brothers and sisters who are currently going through difficulties. Please remember them in your du'as that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may alleviate from them any hardships. Once again, please donate generously on your way out. Jazakumullah khair.